Hello everyone. So up until this point in the chapter, we have studied about the various parts of the human eye and we have studied about the functioning of the eye. We have seen how these various parts of the human eye work together to give us the sensation of sight. We have also studied about the various defects that occur to a human eye and how we cure these defects. Now let us move on and study about some interesting phenomena that light exhibits and understand what happens that causes these phenomena to occur. Well, I'm sure most of you must have seen a rainbow, right? Suppose you're out on a drive or on a picnic with your friends and family and it starts to rain and suddenly a beautiful rainbow appears in the sky. It really makes our day, right? Have you ever wondered how this rainbow, this band of seven colors appears in the sky, just hanging there in the sky? Well, this rainbow, this band of seven colors occurs due to a phenomenon of light which is called as dispersion of light. So in this particular lecture, we'll study about the phenomenon of dispersion of light with the help of a glass prism. And after we have studied, after we have seen how dispersion of light occurs with a glass prism, we'll try and understand how these rainbows are formed. So now, to start with a glass prism, let us first try and understand how a glass prism looks like. And let us try to understand the shape of this glass prism. So here we have a glass prism with us, right? Now here you can see that there are three different rectangular faces of this glass prism. You can also see that there are two triangular faces of this glass prism as well. So this glass prism that we're using is actually an equilateral glass prism. What this means is that the triangular cross section of this glass prism that is there, it is a triangle, right? Now this triangle is actually an equilateral triangle, meaning that all the three sides of this triangle are actually equal to each other. So this is the shape of the glass prism. Now while studying about refraction or dispersion through a glass prism, will incident light on the glass prism, right? So will incident light on one of the rectangular faces of the glass prism. And this light will move out of the glass prism after refraction through the opposite rectangular face of the glass prism. So this is how we depict this particular phenomena in a diagram. So using this diagram, we'll study about the refraction and dispersion of light as it happens through a glass prism. So let's start with the refraction of light through a glass prism. So here we have an equilateral glass prism and we have the rectangular face of the glass prism marked as AB, right? So now we'll incidental light ray PQ on this face AB of the glass prism. So here we see that this light ray meets the surface of the glass prism at the rectangular face AB at a point Q, right? So now this point is the point of incidence. So if we draw the normal to the surface of the glass prism at the point of incidence, we can use the laws of ref refraction of light to figure out the, refraction, the angle of refraction given the angle of incidence, right? And the refractive index of the glass prism. So using the refractive index, we can figure out the direction in which the refracted ray will move inside the glass prism. So here we see that the light ray refracts at this surface and moves inside the glass prism. Now the thing to note here is that the light is moving from an optically rarer medium which is air here to an optically denser medium which is glass here. So in this case the light is going to move in the direction of the normal to the surface at the point of incidence, right? So we can see that the light ray bends towards the direction of the normal. So now this light ray refracts here inside the glass prism, right? Now this light ray moves and this light ray refracts out of the glass prism at the rectangular surface AC of the glass prism. So here at this point, we can see that the point R is the point of incidence where this light ray meets the rectangular surface AC of the glass prism. At this point, if we draw the normal, to the surface at the point of incidence, we can again find the angle of incidence, right? Now again using the laws of refraction, we can figure out the angle of refraction and the direction in which the light ray is going to move after it refracts, refracts out of the glass prism. So at this point, at the point R, 
light is moving from an optically denser medium which is glass here to an optically rarer medium which is air right so light is going to bend away from the normal to the surface at the point of incidence right so at this point r light is going to refract in such a way that it is going to bend away from the normal to the surface at this point r so here we can see the final direction of the refracted ray which is moving out of the glass prism now this is how refraction takes place with a glass prism right we have applied the basic principles of refraction and the basic laws of refraction and using those basic principles and laws we can explain the refraction of light with the help of a glass prism now here one more important thing one more important concept that we should know about is that if we extend the direction of the original incident ray which is pq here and if we extend the direction of the final refracted ray which is rs here and if we extend these two directions we can see that both these rays they meet or they would have met at a point inside the glass prism right now both these rays both these extended rays they make an angle which is shown here by the angle d with each other this angle which is between the original incident ray between the direction of the original incident ray and the direction of the final refracted ray is what is called as the angle of deviation of a prism so the angle of deviation of a prism represented by angle d is the angle which is made by the direction of the original incident ray and the direction of the final refracted ray when it moves out of the glass prism so this is how refraction takes place with the help of a glass prism now we'll try and understand about the dispersion of light with a glass prism and we'll try to understand how dispersion actually happens so let us take this glass prism and understand the phenomena of dispersion of white light wait what white light well white light is nothing but the natural light that we get from our sun so when we incident a light ray a white light ray on this on one of the rectangular faces of this glass prism what we observe is the light which is coming out of the other of the opposite rectangular face of the glass prism is actually a band of seven different colored light rays right now these seven different colors in reverse order are violet indigo blue green yellow orange and red so now this band of seven different light rays is what we get coming out of the other rectangular face of the glass prism now these seven colors in this exact same order appear in a rainbow as well so okay now we have studied about this phenomena where we have seen that we incident a white light on one rectangular face of the prism and we get a band of these seven different colored light rays coming out of the other face of the prism but how does this actually happen well the light ray the white light ray that we have incident on one of the rectangular faces of the glass prism actually consist of these seven different light rays of seven different colors so what the glass prism does here is the glass prism actually splits up the white light into seven different rays of seven different colors and this is the band of colors that we see coming out of the other face of the glass prism the reason why this happens is that all these seven different light rays which have seven different colors have different refractive index when they move from air to glass that is why all these seven light rays they this they refract in a different way in a different magnitude when they move from air to glass that is why we see a separation of these seven different light rays so this phenomena this phenomena of splitting up of the white light into seven different components into seven different light rays of seven different colors which are webgeor is what is called as the dispersion of light this is the phenomena behind the formation of a rainbow this is how a glass prism causes dispersion of light to occur which causes this band of seven different colors to come out of a glass prism when we have incident a white light ray on this glass prism one more important thing that you can note here is that the violet light ray refracts the most when traveling through a glass prism and the red light ray refracts the least amount when traveling through a glass prism so this is the phenomena of dispersion of light through a glass prism now if we keep an inverted glass prism 
Next to the first glass prism that we had, what we'll observe is that the spectrum of colors that is coming out of the first glass prism, it enters the second glass prism, the inverted glass prism, and it undergoes some more refractions in such a way that the light which is coming out of the inverted glass prism is again white light. So what this inverted glass prism do is that it recombines all the seven different color light rays to form white light again. This is the phenomena of dispersion of white light by a glass prism. Now this same phenomena occurs naturally in the sky to form a rainbow. So this phenomena occurs due to the presence of small tiny water droplets which are there in the atmosphere after or during a rain shower. What happens is that these tiny droplets of water actually act as small prisms due to which the natural sunlight which is coming towards these droplets of water, it disperses through these water droplets and that causes the white light to split into seven different colored light rays, right? This causes the band of or the spectrum of seven different colors to appear in the sky. So you must have always noticed that the rainbow is formed opposite to the direction in which sun is. This is the reason why that happens. So this is how dispersion of white light occurs naturally in the sky which forms a rainbow after or during a rain shower. So now in this lecture we have gone through the concepts of refraction of light through a glass prism and we have also seen dispersion of white light with the help of a glass prism. We understood how these concepts apply to a naturally occurring phenomena of formation of a rainbow. In the next lecture we'll study about another interesting phenomena that light exhibits, which is called as Tyndall effect. See you in the next lecture.